Today, we're going to talk about the cell cycle. So all living things have a life cycle. We're born, we get older, we reach adulthood, then we start aging and eventually death. Cells are not an exception to this. So it happens to our dogs, it happens to our family, it happens to plants, it happens to everything that's living. They're born, they age, they die. Cells do the same thing. So you started as this teeny little itty bitty thing smaller than the period at the end of a sentence, like microscopic, can't see it with the naked eye. And you went from this itty bitty tiny microscopic thing to where you are right now through division. So we go from this egg that's been fertilized by a sperm, it has to start growing. So it's going to do something called dividing. It's going to divide and divide and divide and divide and divide. And it's going to make more and more cells until it gets big enough to become a human in our case. Um, dogs, platypuses, horses, snakes, all sorts of living animals uh, and plants do this sort of division. So why do cells divide? Three main reasons. Reproduction, so one-celled organisms, um, they go through division, it's called um, fission, binary fission, so things like bacteria often go through a sexual reprodu re reproduction called binary fission. That's a special kind of division, it's not quite like um, mitosis, but it is a means of reproduction. Cells also divide for growth. So like we just mentioned, we went from a fertilized egg to more and more and more cells until we came up with um, a human being. Lastly, cells divide for repair or renewal. They wanna replace those cells that died from normal wear and tear or from injury. So let's say you're riding your bike and you hit this weird stick and you go flying in front of the, in front of the handlebars and you get this huge gash on your arm your cells are going to immediately start dividing to repair that injury. And then there's wear and tear. Cells age just like we do. They're gonna get old, they're gonna get worn out, they're gonna need to be replaced. So we have our original cell and it's going to divide. Those two cells that come out of it, so it's one and then it'll become two, those are called daughter cells. And those daughter cells are an exact copy of that original cell. So when that original cell starts the process of uh, prophase in our mitosis here, once it starts that process, it's going to immediately start making a copy of its DNA so that when it divides, we get an exact replicant. Everything. DNA, organelles, cytoplasm, cell membrane, everything gets duplicated in there. So that when we do finally separate and become two different new cells, we have the exact same thing. Here, um, we have a little kangaroo rat. And this is an image with some fluorescent dye of an epith epithelial cell of this kangaroo rat. So this weird squarish thing, that is the cell. Notice this orange stuff, that is um, the chromosomes. Those are the DNA, that's the genetic material. And these other wispy things, those are cytoskeleton fibers. We're gonna talk about what that means in a minute. So there are three main phases in this cell cycle, in this life of a cell. First, there's interphase. This is the longest portion of a cell's life. It will spend most of its life in this interphase stage. There are three steps within this interphase. Something called gap one or G1, synthesis or S, and gap two or G2. Different things are happening during these different steps of interface. 
So during G1, our cellular content, so our organelles, our DNA, our, all, all that good stuff, they are duplicated and our cell is growing a little bit. Then moving on to this phase, the S phase, our chromosomes are going to be duplicated. Remember, we want exact copies of that DNA so we can have exact copies of this cell. So we're gonna need to duplicate those chromosomes so that when it does separate and create a new one, we have the same number of genetic material and genes and chromosomes, all that good stuff in both of those cells. And this last phase or stage or step of interface is called G2. This is where the cell really grows and gets ready for this mitosis or cellular division. Our cell is going to double check, so to speak, that everything is good to go and ready for that division step of mitosis. So after interphase, all of these G's and S's are good to go. We enter into M phase. So M stands for mitosis. This is where the actual cell division happens. We're making those copies, we're starting to stretch, and then lastly, our third cytokinesis. So we went from G1, S, G2, mitosis, and then cytokinesis right here. This is when they finally, those two daughter cells split apart and become their own cells. They're individuals now. They were one that was stretching, duplicating, and now they've broken apart. They have separate membranes. They are individual. So let's get down to it, interface. When a cell is at interface, here's our cell, this grayish circle in the middle, that is our nucleus. And of course, what we remember from our organelles, our nucleus contains our DNA, our genetic information. And in this interface stage, they're all just kind of like squiggly and chilling and not doing a lot. We go through our stages, our G1, our S, our G2, and then we'll move on to our mitosis. So here we go. We passed all of those G's and S phases in our interface. We've moved on to our M phase, starting with prophase. I know lots of phases. So in prophase, here are the things that are happening. Our centrioles, remember those from our organelles, um, they will appear. The nuclear envelope, so this thing that was holding all of our genetic material, it's starting to dissolve so that those chromosomes, which are made up of our DNA and our genetic material, can happen and be there so they can be split apart so our two new cells at the end will have the exact same copies of DNA. Chromosomes, so if you remember in our interface, our DNA was all like squiggly and just chilling and like noodles essentially. Chromosomes is that genetic information, that DNA, but it's spun around and wrapped up really, really tightly coiled into these sort of X looking thing called chromosomes. Here we have a real life look uh, as into what prophase looks like. So uh, here we have early prophase. We can see that nuclear membrane starting to dissolve. Things are happening. Um, up and to the right a little bit, we have late prophase. So we can see that those chromosomes have started to appear, that genetic information has started winding and twisting together into these X shapes. And our nuclear envelope is gone, it's dissolved. So it's ready to move on to our next phase, metaphase. So our spindle fibers, so our centrioles here, um, our weird tube looking things, um, those have things called spindle fibers. They are going to attach to central mirrors. So central mirrors are those dots. So let's go back here at our chromosomes. The dots that are the center of our chromosomes, so the center of that X, that is the central mirror. So our spindle fibers from our centrioles are going to attach to our central mirrors. Lots of vocab this unit, guys, I know. It all sounds really similar, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna get through it. And the chromosomes are moved to the center of the cell. This is, this is called a metaphase plate. So up here in the top corner, this dotted line, the center of the cell where these chromosomes are going to line up, that is called the metaphase plate. So here, one more time, we got our centrioles. 
or organelles that will help in cell division. They have these fibers, these orange long things attached to the centromeres of our chromosomes. Looking at our image here, we can see what's happening. So on the far right and left here, we have our centrioles. They're kind of in charge of what's going on right now. They have these weird wispy things going to the center here. Those are the spindle fibers. In our diagram, those are the orange things. And then down the middle, we can see our chromosomes lined up just like I said in the middle of our cell here along the metaphase plate. So our chromosomes are all ready to go. They're attached to these centro centrioles by their centromeres through the spindle fibers coming from the centrioles. All right, now we've attached and now they're going to break them apart. So the chromosomes are going to be pulled apart into th something called sister chromatids. So we, when we think back to our X's of chromosomes, each of those X's is made up of sister chromatids. These are identical. So when we duplicated our DNA, we made sister chromatids of identical DNA. So each one of these is exactly the same so that when they're pulled apart, we get the same genetic information, the same DNA. So one chromatid from each chromosome, so one of those halves, moves, it's getting pulled apart, pulled in half by these centrioles through their spindle fibers. And as they're getting pulled, they're getting pulled to opposite sides of the cell so that they're not like getting mixed up. We know we have half and half of everything. We're good to go. We're just splitting those, those chromosomes in half into our sister chromatids so that when our cell finally splits in half, we're going to have exact copies of that DNA on both sides. So when we're thinking about our chromosome movement, so we had our chromosomes, they're going to get split apart by these spindle fibers and our centrioles. How do they move? Well, they have these cool things called kinetochores. They're kind of like motors and um, up here in the top right, we get a little close up look of what's happening and they just kind of like walk in those fibers, pulling on those centromeres of our sister chromatids and our chromosomes. And they're essentially just gonna bloop, 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 reel it in kind of like a, like a, like a fishing reel, I guess. Um, so this spindle fiber or a microtubule starts to shorten at that kinetochore. So as it's walking in uh, here, it's bloop, bloop, walking, reeling it in. The extra out here just sort of disintegrates, turns into nothing. And here we are at our almost last step. It is our last step of mitosis. It's called telophase. It's also sometimes called telophase. Um, I, I prefer telophase. It kind of feels better in my mouth. I don't know. Um, so here we pulled apart our sister chromatids. They're going to go undergo some replication so that they can turn into chromosomes themselves. So remember chromosomes our chromatids, double copy. So this is what we want. We want the X, they were pulled apart, so now they have to re replicate so that they have the X again in the new cell. And now that we have our chromosomes all good to go, we're replicated, we're where we need to be, our nuclear envelopes begin to reform. We wanna keep those chromosomes and that genetic information inside the nucleus where it belongs in that organelle. And as after we elongated after anaphase, they're gonna start pinching in a little bit so that we can start getting on our path to our last step here when we pinch off and become their own individuals in cytokinesis. They make their own separate membranes to create two separate individual cells. These 
are exactly the same, they are identical. They have the same DNA, the same stuff inside. They are ready to go and possibly divide on their own again after going through their interface. So this is a lot, lots of different phases, lots of different new names. Um, so here are some mnemonics that I like to use. If you include interface, I like to use I interface, picked, prophase, my, metaphase, apples, anaphase, today, telophase, telophase. Or if you don't want to include interface because technically interface is a different step than mitosis, you only want to focus on that M phase, that mitosis phase. I like tacos. I love tacos. So I use pass me another taco. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. So here we go. Another overview. Repetition is key here. Interface. We have all of our organelles here. We have our centrioles chilling. We have our DNA all squiggly and noodle-like. We move on to prophase, things are starting to happen. Our chromosomes are forming. Our nuclear envelope is getting a little wiggly. Our centrioles uh, are starting to move to opposite sides of the cell. Prometaphase is like that step between, it's like late prophase. Uh, the nuclear envelope has pretty much dissolved. It's disintegrated. Um, those chromosomes are starting to move to metaphase where they line up along the middle. Those centrioles have their spindle fibers attached to those centromeres, so that middle part of our uh, chromosomes. And then in anaphase, our spindle fibers are going to pull apart those halves of our chromosomes there so that we can start to get enough information to create two identical cells. We have half of each of those genetic information chromosomes. Then here they kind of jammed together our tele telophase and cytokinesis where they're starting to pinch a little bit. Um, our chromosomes are starting to go back into noodle form. Um, our nuclear envelopes are developing again. Uh, and then cytokinesis is when they finally actually split into two separate individual cells. All right, so we figured out, we learned how all of these different types of cells, so all of our non-sex cells, um, undergo this mitosis or cell division. So how is it regulated? Because if we didn't regulate it, we would just be multiplying cells all the time, willy-nilly. That would be exhausting. That would take so much energy, so much time. So a multicellular organism needs to coordinate these cell divisions. Which tissues need help? Which ones I gashed open my elbow on that bike crash? I need skin cells stat to fix this elbow. How do we know what needs to come and divide? And what, you know, like my brain is okay. I don't need, well, I always need more brain cells, but my brain doesn't think that I need more brain cells. Um, so they're just going to chill there and interface um, and not continue to divide. This is critical for growth. So when you are a baby, you're growing, you're a toddler, you're growing, you're a kid, you're growing, you're a teen, you're growing, and then you hit adulthood. In order to grow, we need our cells to divide. We need more cells to spur that growth. We also need it for maintenance. Obviously, like I just said, I gashed my elbow open on that bike crash. I need help. We need to get this handled. Grow me some more skin, please. So they need to coordinate this cell division. Can't have too much, can't have too little. We need that sweet spot and we need to coordinate that. So not all cells have the same cell cycle. Some cells may take longer in the process, some may need to be reproduced quicker. So let's look at different types. So an embryo, so right after um, that egg cell gets fertilized, that cell cycle is quick. It is every 20 minutes, it's making a new cell. It's dividing, it's dividing, it's dividing. Super fast turnaround. 
skin cells, they're pretty quick. 12 to 4, 24 hour cycle. Um, dust, dust is dead skin. Really gross. But that's what it is. If you see dust, that's dead skin. We're always sloughing off dead skin. It's super gross. But it's part of our life and part of our cells lives. So those are going pretty quick, 12 to 24 hours, they're making new cells. Liver cells, so we all have livers. Um, they will, they have the ability to continue to divide, but they only use it when they really need it. They're not like skin cells who are just always going and partying. They're just gonna hang out until we really need it, maybe once every year or two. And then we get mature nerve cells and muscle cells. For the most part, they don't divide after maturity. They're permanently in that G0 phase. So G0 is the longest part of interphase. G0 means nothing is happening. Absolutely nothing is happening. It's, it's occurring before that G1 phase. So you see zero, you see nothing. Nothing is happening. That cell is just chilling, living its life. Nerve cells typically do not reproduce or do not divide. Um, once you have them, that's all you get. So that's why, you know, when people suffer traumatic brain injuries, they can't always recover from that because their brains or their nerves are not reproducing new cells. So there are different points in our cell cycle that help control what's happening throughout that cell cycle. So there are two irreversible points, the replication of genetic material and the separation of those sister chromatids. So remember our chromosomes are made of sister chromatids and when they are pulled apart, that chromosome becomes a pair of sister chromatids. So throughout this cell cycle, we have checkpoints. These checkpoints say either, we're good to go, everything's in order, let's divide, let's move on to the next step, or they're like, whoa, 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 hang on, something's wrong here. We gotta go back, double check, make sure that we're actually on the right track here. Here's another look at um, some of this vocab. So we have our single stranded chromosomes. That central mirror is that center bit. Um, when they duplicate, we duplicate that DNA, we get sister chromatids. So this purple one duplicates, so now we have two, it's in that X. That green one duplicates, now it has a sister chromatid, so it's in that X. So each one of these halves is called a chromatid. And they are sisters because they're paired together. Now after you know our anaphase and they're pulled apart, those sister chromatids become single-stranded chromosomes. All right, so let's look at these checkpoints. Three major ones. The one between G1 and S phase, the one between G2 and M phase, and something called a spindle checkpoint. So let's break these down. So we are in G1 phase, we're going, we're going, we're feeling good, we're doing our G1 thing. And then before we can move on to the S phase, we have to stop, make sure, can that DNA synthesis begin? Can we duplicate that DNA so that we can move on to our next step and finally get to that mitosis? If we're good, everything is in order, we'll continue on to that S phase. If we have to stop, recheck, walk it back, try again, this is an important checkpoint. If things aren't good here, that cell division stops. It's not gonna happen. All right, so let's say things are good, we're moving on. Now we're in S phase, we're going, we're going. Going into G2 phase, all right, looking good, keep going. We gotta stop right before we hit mitosis, that M phase. We have to check, is everything in order? Has the DNA synthesis been done correctly? There's no mistakes, there's no mutations. Are we good? because at this point, there's no going back. That cell is going to divide. If we don't have exact copies of that DNA, we're gonna get some problems. So it's another checkpoint where 
nothing's, things aren't good, we gotta stop. Mitosis is not gonna happen. But if things are good, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna blast through that checkpoint. Let's get to mitosis. So we're going, we've got prophase, pass me, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, pause. Are all those chromosomes attached to the spindle fibers? Did we pull apart those sister chromatids correctly? Because if we didn't, there might be a problem. Again, this is a checkpoint. All right, those sister chromatids, they're attached right, they're separating right, awesome. Let's get to that cytokinesis, form our two identical daughter cells. So those are the, the three main checkpoints. If something isn't right at one of those, we can't move on. So here's another look at it. Um, this very, very critical, most important of all the checkpoints is that G1S, so that right between the G1 phase and the S phase um, checkpoint. Because if it gets past this point, chances are it's going to divide. It may be able to slip past those other checkpoints, but this one is the one you gotta get through that's the most important. If it doesn't get that go signal, it's gonna exit this, this new cell cycle and interface and it's just gonna go straight back to G0 doing nothing. G0, zero is nothing, it just chills. Non-dividing, differentiated state, most human cells are actually in this G0 phase. Our brain cells, our nerve cells, our muscle cells, those are in G0 forever, forever until we die. They can never divide again. So once we got what we got, once we hit that adult point in our life, we cannot form more nerve cells, cannot make new muscle cells. Here's another look at it. Repetition is key here. Let's look at it. All right, G1, going. We're going, we're doing our G1 thing. Stop, most critical checkpoint here. Most important checkpoint. Is everything good to go? Is everything in line? All right. Right here, it can either be turned away and inactive, go back to that D0 negative, doing nothing stage, or we can go past it, get active, we are good to go. Now we're going, we're going through our S phase, going through our G phase, G2 phase, stop. Did our DNA replicate correctly? If we got mistakes in there, it's not gonna be good. Get some mutations. All right, things are good to go. If it's not, boop, leave that cell cycle, go back to G0, stay there till it dies. We're good to go, we're activated. We're gonna move on to M phase, our mitosis here. We're going prophase, anaphase, anaphase, or sorry, metaphase, anaphase here. We're gonna stop, check to make sure those spindles are attached to our chromosomes correctly. Once they're pulled apart, we have the right number that are being pulled into each new cell. We're good to go. If we're not, not good. Mistakes happen though. And if we're good, we're going to continue on into our cytokinesis or C phase to individual new cells. So those are the things happening inside a cell. Things can happen outside a cell that can determine the growth here. So protein signals are released by our body to stimulate other cells to divide. If they're like, hey guys, we have this gash here. Um, we need some skin cells stat. They're gonna release some proteins that are like, hey, we need some more cell division over here. Come on, let's go, let's move it. And then they'll grow until um, this top one is called density dependent. So when things are full, we'll stop. Once it gets too crowded, we're done dividing and each cell binds uh, a bit of that growth factor. So that means there isn't enough activator left to trigger cell division. So they're all like crammed in there like, okay, 
we're going to send out a little tiny signal and say, hey, we're too crowded. We're good. We should stop dividing. Now, cancer, on the other hand, cancer is a cell division where there's no controlled growth. It's just like, boom, crazy, crazy cell division happening. And why would that control be lost? Most commonly, it's those loose checkpoint stops. Our checkpoints are getting blown through. Things are not stopping. They don't care. They're like, I don't care if I'm not doing my uh, DNA replication all right. I don't care that those spindle fibers are not attached. I don't care. I'm just going to keep going. It's this uncontrolled, unrestrained cell growth. So these growth factors, whether they're internal or external, are not stopping these cells from growing. Oh, it's crowded? Too bad. I'm just going to keep dividing. Who cares? Now, the last bit I want to talk about is something called apoptosis. I think it's really funny sounding and it's fun to talk about. Um, but essentially, it is a programmed cell death, or um, it's often called cellular suicide. So necrosis is something that happens like when you cut your arm open and um, those cells are just like, I'm really gross and I'm going to die. Like cellular suicide means something is wrong with that cell. So it's going to self-destruct. And apoptosis can do things like remove cells during development. So as we're growing inside of a womb, um, it can eliminate potentially dangerously infected cells. Could be cancerous, could be viruses, could be anything that is bad. And it also maintains balance in the body. So why would cells undergo this apoptosis? So some cells need to be deleted in a sense. So when we're talking about our hands, our hands when they're first developed are just like, they look like a, like a, like a mitten essentially like a flipper. And in order to get things like fingers, these cells in between our fingers have to get deleted. Otherwise we just have like this weird flipper hand. This would, this is what our life would be. So those cells between our fingers need to get deleted. Apoptosis is how that happens. So here in our image, um, we can see a mouse paw. So mouse mice also have these little fingers. Um, this is day 12 and a half, and one day later at day 13 and a half, they're already apoptosising those cells. They're already committing suicide to create those finger shapes. All of these little red dots are cells that are self-destructing. They're undergoing that apoptosis. Sometimes cells are abnormal and could hurt the rest of the organism if they survive. So things like infected cells, you get sick, you get a virus, you get some COVID, um, or there's some sort of DNA damage. You're out in the sun too long, you get some UV radiation, it disrupts some of that DNA, it gets damaged. Those cells have to die. Otherwise, they could potentially be really dangerous, cause things like, mel uh, what is it, mel melanose, no skin cancer. <laughs> um, and cells in adult organisms can be eliminated to maintain balance. So, you know, I need to make room for some new cells. My cells are getting old. I want to renew some of those cells to maintain a balance so I don't just wither and die. Um, so those new cells need space to grow. If it's too crowded, they're not going to grow. So we're going to kill off some of those older cells to make room for new cells. And in some cases, cells can be a threat. Like I said, um, you know, they could be infected with, with a virus. They could be precancerous. Um, and so what happens is apoptosis happens or they could lead to cancer. That DNA has been damaged by me sunbathing. Um, so that has potential to do damage and harm to me if it's not killed. If it doesn't go through that apoptosis, it could be a danger to me as an organism. So that's one of the reasons why apoptosis is good. 
gets rid of damaged cells, gets rid of dangerous cells, could be a virus, could be DNA damage, um, but it also can help us grow things like fingers. All right, that is it. If you have questions, please email me, come to office hours, send me a message in classroom. I'm more than happy to go over some of this stuff. Again, slower, explain it in a different way, um, hit me up.